Hey y'all, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about two brushes that work kind of similarly, but uh, vastly differently at the same time. So the first is the inflate and deflate brush. Now the inflate brush works by moving faces along their normals towards the outside of the mesh. So uh, it is an additive brush by default, but you can deflate things with this brush as well, and I will show you that effect as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to increase the size of my cursor, and then we're going to simply inflate a section. So as we inflate this section, and we are being, you know, it's going to symmetrize it, um, what I'm actually doing is moving these faces along the directions of their normals. And since we pulled it off center and did not inflate in the exact center, what's actually happening here is these faces have moved inside one another. So that's not great. That's not something that we want to have. So we're gonna go a little bit further off center and inflate this as well. Okay, and so what we've done is created this kind of bubbled effect on top of our mesh. And we're gonna go check the normals and just see kind of how these faces have moved. So if we go into edit mode, and we want to view the normals, which the normal is just the direction that the face is pointing, really. We can actually turn on the normals view by hitting the normals option um, under the viewport overlays, coming down to normals and turning on the face normals. And so what you'll see is that as we inflated, the faces on the top where we were actually inflating were pulled away from where their original position was along their normal. And as they got pulled, these other faces also, um, you know, got pulled along their normals and their normals adjusted because now they were pointing in a different direction. But let's take a look at some of these normals down here. So if the inflate brush works as I'm explaining, then when we inflate along these faces, we should see the, a bulge come out along this direction instead of up. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. And as I inflate this section, what's happening is those faces, like I said, are moving along their normals and they're giving us this kind of weird overhang and ledge uh, for where we were at. And if we go back in, we can see the normals have now adjusted again, but they've moved further away. Uh, and so we can see that a little bit better in edit mode than we could with the matte cap on in sculpt mode. So that is basically the inflate brush. Um, a little later on, I'll talk about Dentopo or dynamic topology. And the inflate brush used with dynamic topology becomes an extremely useful tool. Um, but that's not for this video, that's for our next video. So just know that the inflate brush is a brush that I use quite a bit. Uh, I highly recommended it to all of my students because, you know, they would try to get, them, get in there and get some tight detail, but they didn't have enough space. So they would have to inflate the area in order to get the detail that they wanted to. So that's the inflate brush. The deflate brush kind of works in the same way. It just moves normals uh, or moves faces along the normals in the direction away from your viewing screen. Okay, so inflate and deflate, both of those are quite fun. All right, so the blob brush works similarly, but we're gonna go ahead and talk about it now. Okay, so the blob brush works kind of like the inflate brush in that you're going to pull faces away from where they were in either an adding or a subtracting pattern. The difference is, is that the blob brush uses a spherical pattern instead of just using the normals. So if we in like blob in this particular area, what you'll notice is that I'm getting a much more spherical, uh, evenly distributed blob coming away from the mesh than I was with the inflate, because you'll notice the inflate has quite a bit of stretching on it, and the blob tool really doesn't. The blob tool also has a subtractor brush, and it will pull mesh uh, away in a spherical pattern as well, and you can kind of see that spherical cut out there from removing a blob of mesh. But the blob brush has a pinch setting, and so I wanna show you uh, what it looks like with negative or zero pinch and with full pinch on. So we're gonna show you the negative pinch here. 
and I'll just come to the left. And so you can see that it's it's not really it's not really pinching anything down. Um it's just kind of expanding out this mesh in a spherical pattern. But if we increase the pinching all the way up to one, and then we come to this side, and we blob this side, what you notice is that though we blobbed out originally, what started to happen? Well, the faces started to get pinched towards the bottom. And so as they reached up towards the top, the faces got larger and larger because we were pinching these vertices down toward the base. So that's really how the pinch tool works. With zero pinch, you end up with this area where kind of all of the faces and vertices get pulled and stretched, um, except the ones on the top, they stay pretty much the same. And then with half pinch, you end up where kind of everything is, is being pulled, but there's kind of a, an effort to keep the base vertices intact. And then with full pinch, we're keeping all of those base vertices intact and then really stretching out the top faces to I guess achieve the look that we want to achieve. Um, I probably went too far with the blob here, but that's basically how the pinch uh, affects the blob brush. So we'll put that back down to zero. And yeah, that's um, that's pretty much it with these two tools. Now I'm gonna be honest. I use the inflate tool, like I said earlier, a lot. I, I use it for like just about every model. I'm inflating something at some point. Um, it's generally a good start off tool when we get into base meshes later on in the course We're going to use the inflate brush and dynamic topology to uh, Make our base mesh a little bit easier to work with and I don't really use the blob tool all that much But there have definitely been some instances. I remember where I needed the blob brush And if you ever forget what the blob brush does you can always check over here on the right hand side There is the little brush icon for these uh, that show you kind of how these brushes work, right? So with all of these brushes, the layer brush, the clay strips brush, clay brush, the draw brush, you get this little icon over here that just kind of shows you a very smoothed out, nicely rendered image for how this brush effect gets applied to your model. All right, I'm Sir Pinkbeard. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.